If you move from a language like Ruby or JavaScript to Erlang or Elixir, you have to get used to a few changes. One of them is that everything is immutable. You cannot simply append two strings together and change one of the strings. What you do is when you use the concatenation operator in Elixir, you actually create a new string. This leads to an obvious problem. If you have templates or other things like that, and you have lots of processes and they're called concatenating strings together, you're going to use a lot of memory. You have to make a copy of everything in each process, and that is very inefficient. Well, it turns out Erlang and Elixir have a method of dealing with this, and it's something called an I.O. list. An I.O. list is a recursive data structure that is used for this. In Elixir, an I.O. list is a data structure that is useful for doing output. And it looks something like this. An I.O. list can consist of strings as well as char lists and also other. It can be recursive, so you can contain other I.O. lists. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, as you pass strings between processes, if they're bigger than 64 bytes, you don't actually make copies. You simply pass a reference to the string from one process to the next. So if you then were to concatenate it, then you'd have to copy it. But in an I.O. list, you don't. So since everything is immutable, if you have an I.O. list of a string, and then say you want to add a character to the end of it, instead of creating a new copy of the string, which might be quite large, you just have the string, and then another binary. It's an I.O. list, and when you send it to a port or to a file system or whatever, the runtime just puts it all together for you. Now, this happens in a number of places. If you use a template library, so EEX and Elixir, or you're using the Django template library in Erlang, then what you get out is actually an I.O. list, and it, looks, it might look something like this. Now, take this template. It's a page of HTML, and you have some headers at the top, and then you have like a loop in it that lets you iterate over a data structure, maybe produces a table. Right. So how is this going to produce? Well, it's going to produce a data structure. An I.O. list, you know, it's got a, a big block for the top, or maybe it's a one for each line, depending on how the system produces it. And then it's going to produce a sublist for each line in that table, and maybe even sublists for there. Okay, now that's how this is. No new strings are created, you're just reusing them all. Or maybe if they are created, it's because you've, you know, encoded some data as a JSON or something like that, but they're unique to that process. All of the things that can be reused are yay, recycling, and when you push it out to the output, it's just, it all serializes. This nice thing is adding the element to the end of a list, this is a linked list, is a linear time operation. So if you have 100 items in a list and you want to add a carriage return at the end, it's a rather clean. I think I'm creating a new list that is the initial list plus the carriage return and just pushing everything down one level in the structure is a very cheap operation. So you can add things onto the front or the back of a, of a output very easily depending on what you want to do. This means you can do I.O. very efficiently in Erlang and Elixir. So again, when you use a template like you would in a web application, all the bits that, that are the same from page to page, from user to user, page to page, only have to have one copy of those. You never have to make copies in memory and they're just reference counted. On the other hand, the bits that change are the only bits, such as like some user specific data, are the only bits that really you have to worry about. It's a very efficient system of I.O. I hope that was useful to you. If you have any questions, if I didn't cover this clearly, please let me know in the comments. You can also, please also subscribe and share this on your social media and with your colleagues. And if you have, and if you'd like some help getting your team up to speed in Elixir or Erlang, please give me a shout. I do training courses.